guys welcome back to Milani land this is Alondra and in this video we're gonna be talking about some tips and what you must keep in mind before you decide to have a BBL in the Dominican Republic so these are tips that I gather throughout my journey and I feel like I should 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 share them with you guys because I know it's gonna be helpful for some of you guys out there um, and I almost have six months after my surgery and I honestly feel like a brand new bitch and um, yeah I feel like it's very accurate and it's right on time for me to share these tips so here we go um, with any further delay let me just say before that that thank you guys for the support that you guys have been um, giving me along this journey i highly appreciate it it warmed my heart anytime somebody reached out to me to ask me about the journey or anything that they would like to know i'd love to help um do not hesitate to subscribe please do so um if you're new to my channel welcome my name is alondra and i've been talking um through my journey of my video in the dominican republic and also sharing some stuff about beauty now and then so um welcome if you're new to my channel and please subscribe all right without any more further delay let's get into it the first tip that i would like to talk about you guys will be that you need to make sure that your doctor anytime you start doing your search and you decide what doctor you want to go for that he has the right credential for uh, the title that he has um there's a page in the dominican republic that you can search them to double check that they belong to the right um what's the name of that to the right association of surgeon in the dominican republic um, I'm gonna touch the page down below so if you are through the process of choosing a doctor and you haven't decided yet you can go straight ahead and double check if he is certified or not because let's just be honest um, living in America and going to the DR or some other country to get a surgery is very risky so I feel like everybody should do this first step but to be honest most of us don't do not do it I did it i mean i'm dominican and i have seen um, a lot of people that i know that have had surgery and i already kind of have a background when it comes to that i know who who kind of i can trust and who i shouldn't trust so but you guys must not be in the same situation that i am so here you are double check that we want to be snatched but we also want to be safe right all right so the second uh point would be oh also by the way before i move to the second point um there's a page here in america called the real self um i know um there's not like a liability or not li liability um and i'm sure it's not sure that they can't like that the reviews that they have in that real in that page real self are not legit but at least i have seen some people talking you know like you kind of get like a feeling of why what why is that doctor up to so even though you know it's not certified by the real self at least you get a little bit of um understanding of where that doctor stand you know it doesn't hurt anyone to double check real self as well i got some knowledge from that page believe it or not um the second topic now we can fully move to the second topic um it will be that anytime you get a quote from a doctor try to ask them to disclose to the disclosure everything that the price that they're giving you offer why do i say that i say that because while i was in my recovery home i encountered a situation that one of the girls had which was that her doctor covered the massages right but she had to tr to literally go like literally take a taxi every afternoon to go to the massage places that the doctor offered her the massages now for the most part, when you get your disclosure and the doctor say, oh, I offer this, this and that, this and that, you don't usually ask, well, 
um, should I just tra like move, uh, transport transport myself to the place where you're gonna give me my, my massages? You usually don't think about it. You just think that everything is gonna be beautiful and unicorns are gonna be flying around and uh, pink is gonna be everywhere. No, these porkers have to literally transport themselves from the um, recovering home to the place where they will get the massages they're first of all they are on pain and when you're on pain you don't want to move especially after a bbl after a bbl you feel like somebody beat you up 20 times and then a truck went over you and you couldn't move that's literally how you feel so you literally have no energy or the one to move to a place so that way they can give you your massages. And after the massages, you're a little bit, you feel better, yes, but before the massages, you're kind of like, uh, it's like frozen meat. You need to warm up in order for you to feel better. And um, yes, so on top of everything that they have to go to the place to get the massages the place was so far away like with traffic it would take them like 50 minutes to get there mine my, my, my is the dominican republic and by that time it was the middle of the middle not the beginning of july which is super super hot like nobody wants to be in that situation so please anytime you get your quote and if they offer you massages in the price make sure how they do the massage thing do you have to transport do you have to transport yourself to where they are because if that's the case you also need to think about how much you have to pay because that's another thing they have to pay a fee anytime they were transport from one place to another place it's the same thing and over you know and for that i made as well just ask them not to offer me the massages and get somebody that will go to the recovery home to do them for me so that way i don't have to move that person comes to me and i don't have to pay a fee to transfer myself to that place so keep that in mind because i know it's gonna be a big relief if you just double check that all right um now the third topic is gonna be all about saf sa safety safety yes why safety because we are in the dominican republic and it, believe it or not even though i love my country i need to be realistic it's not as safe as america now i don't want to get into into the detail of like oh there's more likely that you will get killed in america than in dominican republic i'm not gonna go there i'm just talking about robbery for example simple as that just because you're American and you may have an iPhone, somebody can rob you. That, that may happen in the air, you know, but that may not happen as frequently here in America. Now, the first thing that you need to double check is that your, what, what type of transportation does your doctor offer? Most doctors that I have seen so far offer you transportation from the airport to the clinic or vice versa if they don't they may charge you an extra charge for you for them to do that for you my doctor dr tattoo he offered me transportation so they weren't picking me they, they went and picked me up at the airport and took me to the clinic where they did all my um test and then i stayed there the first night and then the second night i got my surgery so Keep that in mind, see what they offer you because that's something that can literally make you feel safe. Let's put it like this. The sick the, the all the point that I was about to mention was about uh, was about the money. When you go into the Dominican Republic to get a BBL, try to get your money exchanged in the airport. Why do I say that? Because you're getting out of the uh, you're getting out of the gate wherever you are, you get your money exchanged, and if your doctor offers you transportation, which if they don't offer you, please try to take it, even if you have to pay extra. Why? Because you get off your plane, you change your money, you have money on you that you don't want to risk it, plus the money that you have to pay for the surgery because most likely you're gonna have cash for that. And then if they pick you up, you're safe. You don't have to worry about anything. They're gonna take you to your clinic, everything is gonna happen, and then they're gonna pick you up and take you to your recovery home. And then the recovery home is gonna offer you transfer transportation. I'm pretty sure that will happen. And then they're gonna take you to the airport. 
simple as that you don't have to have any contact with the outside world in Dominican Republic you don't have to worry about anything else you know just just think like that and you should be okay without worrying about anything now that's gonna happen like that that's that may happen like that if you get all your supplies that you're gonna need for your BBL in America yes that's the next point that I was about to mention which I literally lost track of how many points I have crossed already but anyways next point is that if he, it, it, the next point is to get all your supplies in America why do I say that because first of all in the art most likely you're not gonna you're not gonna get the same quality of stuff that you get here in America that's the first point the second point is that most likely um, it's gonna be more expensive if you buy at the recovery home they're gonna literally like literally kill you i remember at my recovery home they were selling um pads sanitary pads for 400 pesos which 400 pesos was like how much is 400 pesos 400 pesos is like it's like ten dollars ten dollars yeah it's around ten dollars and even though it may not seem like a lot I come from the yard. I know how much that she costs. You know, so just keep that in mind. Um, try to get, and also, if it, even if you forget about something, don't think that they're gonna have everything at the recovery home. For the most part, they're gonna have, they can have like, a, they can, they usually have for sale, maybe pads, maybe wipes, maybe uh, the pillow, the BBL pillow and stuff like that, but not everything that you need. Like, try to get everything you need before you get there so that way you don't have to worry about anything else once you get there okay are we clear all right um all right so the next point is gonna be the crush that you get once you get out of surgery and you look at your body for the first time let me tell you that in my case what i experienced is that as soon as i got out the surgery room yes i felt like my stomach was super flat the first day but the second day it got hard and like a rock and i was like oh my gosh it doesn't feel like i literally got something done it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel like it was worth it you know it, it was like this crush that it was like oh my god i'm in so much pain but it doesn't seem like it's worth it like it's just you kind of like want to look snatched as soon as you get out of the surgery room but that did not happen like that so let me tell you to chill out because the results are gonna come later with time as time passes by and your body start um losing the swollenness of the surgery you're gonna see the result you're gonna see your, your weights get smaller you're gonna see all the changes that your body's gonna go through but i understand where you're coming from because i was that in, i was that in, in that situation where i was like oh my god well look at nash like i spent so much money where's my body it's coming i promise you it's coming all right so the next thing that i want to talk about is related to the last point that I mentioned but it's literally after literally after the days so the transition was that as soon as I got out of the um, surgery room and um, days after I feel like my body was not changing but after literally the a day like I, I start seeing slowly the changes you know slowly but surely the changes in my body and then I remembered that literally three weeks, four weeks ago, uh, later, like I, I start seeing like my hips popping, my waist getting smaller. I was looking great. I was looking amazing. By the way, my, your belly gets super, super dark because like it was stretched out with the fat, and now that it's not there, your body need to like even out that color um, in your belly. And then after that, I felt a shift on my hips. I was like, I do not have as much hips as I had. And it's like, yeah, you lose fat, but you don't lose it. It just goes somewhere else. Because I feel, I'm, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, but what I feel that happened is, what happened was, this is what I feel that what happened. I feel like what happened was that fat is gonna go where there's the where where the most fat is at 
so the most fat in my body was on my um at the bottom of my hip on my bottom at the bottom of my um at the bottom of my butt like you know the drop where your butt drop there is where I had the most fat on my butt and I feel like it dropped a little bit from the hips all the way to the bottom of where my butt drops and even though it doesn't feel bad it doesn't feel like oh my god like it feel it feels like I didn't have nothing done I can see the changes because once you get a liposuction everything gets a figure you know and I feel like I feel good I, I, I appreciate my results but I just thought that I would have more hips but that was not the case because fat will always move a little bit more and you will always you will feel like you're losing but you're not losing you're just going somewhere else so keep that in mind now that takes me to the next point which is that I will recommend to weigh to gain as much weight as you can because that way they're gonna inject as much fat as they can I didn't have a lot of I mean I have fat but I wish I would have go I would have went ham and cheese eating and be super fat so that way they can took fat from everywhere but that was not my case because I was working a lot trying to make that money for that BBL so I didn't have much time to eat but if you can I recommend you to do that eat as much as you can and yeah do that please you're gonna appreciate this tip okay it's not that i'm grateful i'm very grateful with my results but i'm just saying i wanted to be a little bit more greedy okay all right now the next point is gonna be to be ready to spend money on garmin i spend a lot of money on garmin let me tell you that why because you want to be comfortable and sometimes you buy garmin maybe maybe a table like the, the front table the fr the back table whatever and you don't feel comfortable you feel like it's, it's just not comfortable and then you buy this other one and this one is comfortable and then even though you're trying to sell it maybe you may not sell it i have literally a bag full of garmin tables table tablet tablet is it tablet or table i don't think it's table this is a table tablet okay the side tablet, the side tablet, the back tablet. Huh. I think like I'm saying something wrong. Mm, the board. The board. The front board, the back board, the side board. I have a bunch of them with me in a bag right now. And a bunch of garments as well that I didn't feel comfortable with. And I literally spent a lot of money on Garmin that at the end of the day I didn't use but you just don't know like how do you know trying yeah trying and that's what happened with me trying took me to the understanding that not all garments are gonna work for everyone so in the whole video that I posted a literally right before my surgery so even even though I posted some stuff I have different boards over there that you can double check and the one that you feel like it will be more suitable for you go for it but I'm telling you I'd rather be safe and buy extra ones so that way when I get to the R I don't have to struggle with that and I'm prepared just saying but just be ready to spend money on garment because you just want to be comfortable okay all right so the last point that i want to talk about is that i feel like i feel like once you get a surgery for the first time and you fix something that you have been struggling for the longest in your life like your belly for example or anything your breasts whatever i feel like it become an addiction why because you feel like power can give you the beauty that maybe you never had or some or change something that you always struggle with it's just so simple to literally just with money fix this and you may feel like you have the power now to gather any type of money and fix whatever you want listen i went through that I was going ham and cheese after my surgery. I was like, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get this done, I wanna get this done, I wanna get this done. Chill out. I feel like a surgery is, it affects you psychological 
and then you come around and how I hope you come around on time because if you don't I'm pretty sure you're gonna regret a lot of things I remember right after my surgery I was like I want to buy implants I want to buy implants and I was so sure about it and then I was like baby girl you love yoga um you love this you love that and you look fine you look fine you look natural nobody can say i got a surgery nobody can to be honest nobody can because i look fine i look natural i look good if i get butt implants i'm gonna look crazy and people are gonna notice that i have surgery that's not my point because i always feel like keep it classy nah ratchet okay so I literally went through that transition where I wanted to get a lot done and now I'm like I'm fine I don't need to do anything I will get a second BBL after I have kids if it comes to that but I, I it just like made me reflect on what I actually wanted and not being greedy you know now I understand that I want to get my breasts done and that's something that I actually want to get done before I have kids because I want to enjoy my body before I have kids. I'm 24 years old and I want to have kids when I'm 30. That's if it got allowed that like that. I don't know. I don't know. But I came to the conclusion that all I want to do is my breasts. I don't want to do any butt implants. I was just trying to be greedy. And thank God I came around. So just keep that in mind. Anytime you have a surgery, you may feel like the first surgery for the most part, you may feel like you have that freedom that with money you can get anything done. But just trying to be realistic on what you actually want because I have seen some people lose track of it and now they not even look themselves. That's crazy, all right? All right, so I hope this tips help you guys. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment. Anything that you guys wanna add so other people can see it and keep in mind, just put it down below. Um, this is gonna be a long journey because I'm gonna be blogging every surgery that I get done but it's not like I'm gonna get a lot done I'm gonna get my breasts done and if I get like let's say like lip injection or anything I feel like I'm gonna push it towards surgery this I'm gonna push this channel a little bit more towards like cosmetic um uh, cosmetic uh surgeries and process and stuff anything related to beauty so give me a follow Thank you for supporting me once again. Stay tuned and I'll see you then I'll see you on the next one. Baby girl. Bye.